I am putting in my best foot forward every morning when I show up to class. Right. You know, that has become my priority. And with yoga, with the current mix that I'm in, whether it is my professional life or my personal life, I have found, and I'm not going to use the word comfort spot over here because it's not that. Because mentally there are challenges every single day in both these yeah. fields. But I have found a place where I'm actually feeling complete. Hello, I'm Sharad Bansori and welcome to this discussion where we try to examine ourselves, our thoughts and our lives by trying to ask the right questions and face the only thing that we can be sure of, uncertainty. Today, I have with me Ritika Varshne, a yogini and an upcycling entrepreneur and we delve into a conversation about our lives and our corresponding duties. This is The Method. How would you describe yourself? Hmm. Funny that you had actually asked me to prep this question and I give it zero thought. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you say how would you describe yourself, it could be anything, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking for an answer to this question, but hmm. how do you respond to this question? Hmm. So you hmm. are already doing it in part. Yeah, by so. confusion. So. Hmm. Well, it is also I've kept it broad for a reason. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, because when you asked me that question, there were so many different thoughts that went through my mind. For example, does my profession define me? So am I supposed to say that I'm a yoga teacher or but wait, I'm also an artist because I also do this. So typically then I'm a creative person. But at the same time, my personality is also my identity. So I'm an outgoing person. So. But at the same time, I'm also not a very outgoing person sometimes. So there's always this confusion that is there in the mind then right. when you ask such a broad uh, question. Uh, so to answer your question, I'm many, many things. Okay. Um, sometimes I am uh, very outgoing. Sometimes I retreat into my shell as well. Um, yes, yoga is a big part of my identity because uh, I teach it, I practice it and I try to live by the path of yoga. So from the moment I wake up to the time that I go to sleep, even when I'm sleeping, in fact, I try to remember as many um, learnings of my practice as I can and use it in my day to day life. So it does become a part of my identity. Um, so a yogini would be a better answer in that case. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it. You've said so many things because I've, this this is by far my well my favorite question that I've come up with in I mean I've not seen it anywhere like you know when, when you research what questions to ask uh, to ask mm -hmm. and obviously I've not I have done that in part what questions to ask but they've really not satisfied what I I wanted to get out of the conversation um, one person said that I will describe myself like this mm. uh, one person said um, that I do this and that therefore this is who I am. The other person, because the crux of this question is, if you really pay attention to it, one of the, you, you're faced with an uncertainty here, right? But, and I think one of the reasons that that's the case is because you don't know if you are supposed to give a descriptor of yourself or an identity. Because it's not very obvious that it's the same thing. Also, do you even know your identity fully yet? Because yeah, that yeah, evolves, right? Yeah. And also, That's constantly do you ever, changing. ever know, know you fully? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or ever, do you ever realize your identity? Or is identity, identity something that is static? Yeah. You know, because yeah. even if you, I struggle a lot. Like when people are like, okay, what do you do? I'm like, whoa, yeah. what a question. Yeah. I don't know how to answer that without sounding cocky. You know, yeah. because if I try to give a very, a, a, a true, descriptor of who I think I am, then I feel like it's sounding a little cocky. So I don't say that. Hmm. Right. Um, so anyway, but what I've identified with articulation is that if you say, so, okay, if I asked you a question and you're confused about it, and if you don't say anything, you will remain confused. Hmm. That's what I think. Hmm. But if you say something, if you articulate it poorly, hmm. Then your conscious will be like, conscience will be like, ah, uh, no, there's something left, or hmm. or you said something too much, hmm. something like that. Hmm. Um, okay, so you said something, you said you are a yogini. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
uh, and then you said you um, there is a practice of being a yogini correct right what does yeah. that mean so um to give you a very simplified answer people see yoga as a form of exercise as a means to get fit but that's just one very very small part of yoga what yoga really is is a philosophy like stoicism like different thought processes it's a philosophy and it tells you how to live how to think how to breathe how to eat everything so from the moment you wake up the processes that you should be following for a healthy body good breathing technique to keeping your mind sane to the kind of food that you're eating how are you sleeping everything is kind of laid down in a way for you right as like a framework as a framework that listen so many people have done this in the past and have reached a certain end goal and this is what we recommend that you can do if you're on the path of yoga so yeah it's not a very easy path it's it's fairly complex Fair if you're yeah. living yeah. in yeah. um the, the 21st society. century yeah. and if you are especially like our age 20 mm -hmm. early 30s in the 20s <laughs> early 30s i mean but like yeah. we have a very a lot of us rather have a uh, a very social life and um we have late nights we have work pressure stress peer pressure this that 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 all of that so how do you balance yourself in the midst of that mm -hmm. and try to stick to that path Right. So, would you would I I'm going to simplify it obviously at a at the cost of being slightly inaccurate but would you would you would this be a better way of phrasing it that there are a lot of desires and indulgence or temptations that are present to us and we don't know how to operate within those would that be a better way because of everything that you listed down for me in my head were just desires yeah, none yeah, of those yeah, yeah. are things that are essential from a duty perspective and I'm saying that because of the language of stoicism. Yeah. Um, but everything you said was slightly around desires. And absolutely, absolutely. Right. Because most of us wander from our path because of our desires, right? Okay. So at the end of the day, whether it is stoicism or whether it is yoga, it's a path of self-exploration. Okay. Right? You're trying to find yourself. You're trying to find your purpose, and you're living within a certain framework with mm. that purpose in mind. yoga is the same thing in yoga right. especially let's say the bhagavad gita right bhagavad gita is teaching you exactly this and bhagavad gita is one of the prime books of yoga teaches you exactly how to think breathe etc through the example of a conversation between krishna and arjun happening during the mahabharat so in bhagavad gita krishna tells arjun that you have to cut away from your sensory temptations don't wander and don't sway between extremes so one moment you're extremely happy one moment you're extremely sad neither is good for you even happiness is going to lead to sadness at some point or the other going to build expectations desires and unfulfilled desires will lead to disappointment so once again you will stray from your path so right. try to stay in the middle hmm. even if something happy is going on in your life don't wander towards a state Don't of take that as an indicator of you're doing the right thing yeah yeah, yeah. and exactly uh, what you said don't take that as an indicator that you're doing the right thing also coming to that uh, aspect where he says that when you're doing anything don't do it with the expectation of getting some um, gratification gratification such. from your uh, right from meeting your goals rather from, right don't right, even expect right, to meet your goals right, don't, just right, do the process right. focus on the process think about what has to happen later right like the idea that don't do something good so that you get the recognition for it Absolutely. because the moment you do that you sort of uh, the integrity of that action sort of loses loses its essence. yeah okay um but i'm sensing that we are now far too ahead in our conversation because i feel like we've not said anything substantial not that we have to but also um i want to take a step back hmm. and uh, instead of starting from where we have come hmm. i'll go, go back a little hmm. bit uh, so i want to talk to you because you said yoga is important to you you didn't mention bhakti at any point okay yeah. Yeah. Uh, and i know that because i know you hmm. so as a question could you walk us through the important milestones yeah um or instances not just positive uh, that led you to this mode of being whatever it is with respect to yoga with respect to bhakti with respect to your personality which is your personal life yeah what are the milestones and instances yeah that were yeah. important in the last 10 years obviously yeah 
so um, once I had graduated, I was uh, fairly clueless of where I wanted my life to be. Yes, I had a brief indication of wanting to do travel journalism and things like that, but that never worked out. And I kind of just followed a path that was being shown to me as like, listen, if you do this, your future will be secure. So okay, go ahead. Um, so I uh, once I post graduated, I picked up a job. and i worked there for close to 2 years but a year and some months through i realized that wait this is not for me and i'm not meant to be doing this and i wanted to study further and move towards policy at that point and uh, i quit my job i applied to a couple of uh, colleges abroad to study public policy but i was under qualified i did not have the right kind of experience under my belt either so i had this phase of being kind of jobless uh, for a good 6 months and in those 6 months i picked up painting once again so i used to love painting and i used to paint a lot back in school but after school got over college happened work happened that kind of just faded into the background so in those 6 7 months my mom in fact you know she was just like why don't you just start painting again and i had uh, an old monk bottle at home so an empty old monk bottle and it's a beautiful bottle so i thought wait let me just paint on this why paint on a traditional surface right. so i just looked up exactly what paints i need to use and i got those and i started painting on that and when i made my first batli i uh, just put it up online as a thing like oh look I this is this. what i did today yeah. and uh, somebody reached out to me and asked me if i'd be willing to sell it and i was just like oh okay cool let me make you another one then and that's how it started i made two bottles i put three bottles online and more and more people started reaching out to me and that's when in fact i'd come to you and uh, nishad to help me start batli in a way that i wanted to get the creatives going i wanted to do mm-hmm. a, yeah you guys helped me with the logo designing for oh. batli i told you that this is the name that i have in my yeah, head yeah, yeah. and i have a brief idea of what i wanted to look like i in fact have that notebook as well where we do oh, rough yeah. sketches of the whole thing sitting at candies yeah oh damn yeah yeah so <laughs> you and nishad were pretty instrumental in helping me getting it going the press part of my brain <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cuz um, i remember the whatsapp group now like suddenly it's coming to me yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so that's how batli came into being and um, i had applied to colleges but not heard back from colleges when i had started doing batli in a way hmm. um but just when i was about to start the instagram page get that logo going get my prints and stuff like that I got rejected by both the colleges that I had applied to on the grounds that I mentioned before mm-hmm. and I got even more motivated to just continue doing this right. and just see how it goes and luckily my parents supported me on that front so that's that was the inception of Bartley and uh, it's still going on it's still happening but along the way of course the years passed time passed all of those things happened and i um, started facing a personal uh, emotional lull in my life right. i was going through a bit of a rocky patch i think almost 3 years after starting bartley hmm. and um, uh, things were not good at home things were not good in my love life everything kind of seemed to be going downhill and uh, as a outlet or as a mode of recreation i take into drinking quite a bit and just socializing with people as much as i could so i tried to be out of the house right. at least four to five evenings was that an active way of distracting yourself definitely okay. yeah and okay. just um, distraction and suppression right so right. both of those things were happening at the same time hmm. um and of course a habit like that is not sustainable it shows on your uh, sleep it shows on your productivity everything started struggling everything started suffering again it was my mom who was just like kya chal raha hai you know kya kar rahi hai life mein so uh, she in fact pushed me into doing a yoga class and she put me into a beginners batch which was at 6 am in the morning so um, it was a 3 month beginner batch and the place that i had to go to was just a 10 minute walk from my house and at 5:30 in the morning i'm not going to get a rickshaw either so i had to wake up at 5:15 5:30 and walk my way to my yoga class early in the morning and i remember joining in the winter season so i joined in october so october cool november december were the 3 months 
mornings are fairly cold even though you are in bombay but they are pretty chilly so um, somehow i made it through those um, 3 months uh big was it struggle throughout the, the three months big struggle yeah big struggle because um i was still in that phase so right. it was an effort to get out of that phase and right. when you're doing something consistently for a good 7 8 months you can't suddenly one day wake up and say aaj se main har roz 5:30 baje uthne wali hu you know and i'm not right. i'm not going to sleep at 2 o'clock anymore and especially like when you when you're saying that you're doing those thing that thing for Seven eight months. That was not a good thing. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. To pull yourself out of it. See, at that moment, I had one or two days where I felt extreme anxiety, and mm. I had painted it because I couldn't express it. Like right. I could feel that you know my stomach dropping, I can't breathe, I'm feeling this palpitation. All of that is happening, but I didn't know who to reach out for help or exactly what is even happening with me. I could figure out why it is happening. but i was not able to control it right so right i mean you could figure out that that you could point out to it but you couldn't precisely yeah i couldn't stop yeah. it i i could have stopped it but i couldn't stop it in that moment because i was too down a certain path right um i couldn't go to anybody for help either in that moment i didn't think anybody would understand so um i let it just be um those 3 months however did help me get out of it uh somehow mm. because uh, i had a great teacher and when i mentioned earlier that a yoga session is not just physical exercise she made it a point to have discussions about a uh, lifestyle discussion about yoga philosophies every week so we used to have one session in the week where we would just sit and discuss a certain topic related to yoga philosophy so those things kind of started helping me out and once i finished the beginner session i decided to just continue with her and i did that as a student with her for a good 2 years again and then again it was my mother who was just like why aren't you start doing this professionally now <laughs> so <laughs> you know take up a teacher training course right. and that did seem like a good idea because i was doing bartley co as a freelancer so right. i did have plenty of free time at hand yeah. or i could have at least scheduled my time mm. better to accommodate uh, both. yeah both yeah. so i did pick up a teacher training course for a good one year and it was fab what an experience and that was that big turning point for me in my life because um in those 12 months that I was doing that course most shit went down in life right so but and when I hit rock bottom I didn't hit rock bottom I don't right. know if you know what you I mean like brace I could come out of it the very next day right and like, that was majorly because of yoga yoga yeah, yeah man and it it was that something happened of course that right. day was shitty max of course yeah but the next day I woke up and I was like you know what it's cool I right. can deal with it right Right. And you could influence yourself. I could yeah, yeah. I could convince yeah. myself at that moment to pick myself up and get going. And you could also yeah. do it. Yeah. Not only is convince in terms of this is the right thing to do, yeah. but you did it because yeah. it, it's very easy to sort of know Tell what yourself. the right thing yeah. is. Yeah. I mean that's the quote, right? Uh it's a lot easier to fight for our principles than to actually live them. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then then the teacher training thing happened and um I also in Uh, But there's a lot of overlap here because in my head because I've known you yeah uh, these things happen quite close to each other right like it, it's not that you did bartley go for 3 years and then yoga happened lo- a lot later it was, mm, it was sort of like there's a lot of overlap here all of this happened in huh. what, 5 years or 4 years it's been 6 years now 6 years so in 6 six six years, years all of this happened yeah i've right. so i've been practicing yoga now for 3 years 3 hmm. or 4 no more than 3 years Wait, it's going to be close to five years actually. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that, two that's, years. That's 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 years. precisely what I'm saying. There's a lot of overlap. Without Correct. It doesn't. It didn't seem like it till you started talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because in my head, no, 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 there is a lot of overlap yeah. in it. Yeah. Because yeah. you didn't speak about any of these things, uh, at least actively. When we used to yeah. meet and chill. Because you would talk. either talk about only Bartley Co. I didn't know you were doing yoga when you were doing Bartley Co. Yeah, way. because at that time it was just like a thing. But you didn't even talk about it at all. Oh yeah. For some reason, I mean, I don't remember. For me, in, okay, here's uh-huh. how it looks in my head, right? You did, you did Bartley Co. Yeah. And at some point, uh, you decided to get into yoga teaching. Yeah. So that's how me, you see it. Yeah. 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 I yeah. don't. I didn't see you doing it as a uh, hobby student or as a uh, fitness thing. Huh. You know, I directly saw you from Bartley Co. to be a teacher. Yoga teacher. Huh. Yeah. 
no no there was a huge yeah. uh, gap in the middle i mean 2 years if i'm not wrong yeah, yeah yeah a good 2 years yeah yeah okay yeah you said a couple of things i don't want to interrupt you hmm. um i am going to go back in your timeline sort of to ask you some some things um you said something where you didn't know what to do but you had a sense of what to do and because people would tell you um what to do hmm. sort of yeah could you talk about who these people were in terms of a category were they your friends were they family mainly oh, okay yeah all right yeah and you sort of let that judgment not judgment but that that suggestion that suggestion was important to you to a level yes because you i mean did you question that suggestion at any point i did but okay. then i also didn't have any other alternative in my own mind okay so, so it's so you're like might as well yeah i was like wait i don't have a plan b so might as well just go with the plan that okay. somebody else has given me do you have any idea why you didn't have a plan b like in hindsight no, okay i think i was just too uh, casual in life <laughs> didn't okay. take things too seriously okay didn't think i have had to take life too seriously so now there is a have to in a way yeah man yeah right. have to and take that sort of seriously. you don't see that as a bad thing no no i don't right i mean of course there are uh, many many uh, non serious uh, things about it too but i do take life seriously like it's this i don't want to waste this life you know good good way of phrasing that yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what i mean like i don't think i want to waste my life away <laughs> no no i get it it's <laughs> also because i mean socrates said this right the unexamined life is not worth living which is very similar to what you said yeah like i don't want to waste it yeah might as well take it seriously, seriously. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not like oh you have to but hey you're alive but i i've been doing this since school it it mm. was like a fair enough science karu commerce karu koi bolega science kar le to baad mein tu 10 cheez kar sakti hai commerce karegi to do hi kar payegi humne like theek hai to mere paas zyada option science karke honge to main science karti hu right you know like it was that always like a baad mein dekhte hain kya hoga oh right okay it was it was never a ki mujhe engineer banna hai to main ye karungi to main ye karungi to main ye karungi there was no goal right and then i'm doing like a step by step thing to reach the goal there was never a goal right it was just like ha theek hai ye kar lete hain ट those are tangible products correct right yeah um okay are you talking about like spiritual growth no matter how many books i read and whatever i talk about i don't see things as okay this is spiritual and this is philosophical um this is a way to live that's the best way of summarizing it so when i ask you something it's a summation of all of this unless mm. i specifically ask you but i don't i don't understand what spiritually means i don't understand what philosophically means because let me club the two right. like when you say growth are you talking about mental growth or are you talking about tangible growth well from okay let me rephrase it ha huh. when you uh, when you said when you were younger hmm. you didn't have a end goal which had steps that you had to follow right yeah. like for example if you were 9 if you were 14 and you hmm. wanted to be an engineer then hmm. you know what to do you can't take arts you can't take commerce hmm. you had to take science yeah. you had to do either bsc or engineering yeah. or whatever yeah. but you didn't and in fact even your post engineering life is kind of charted out for you tum engineer banoge tum 2 3 saal kaam karoge fir tum mba banoge fir tum itni life itne time yahan pe kaam karoge right. it's like it's it's in a way it is planned of course uh, you may have a different path that you may suddenly choose after you become an engineer or whatever but in your head you kind of have a charted path well okay okay right so Is let me rephrase I mean. it there's always the option of following the charted path yeah right? yeah okay. in my case there was no such path right like it was always so you, you didn't have any i'm using this word very loosely you didn't have any role models as such no okay i don't think i have a role model today either uh, i was about to ask you that okay <laughs> yeah in Fair fact enough. when you asked me to pick a quote I actually turned towards my husband. I looked at Pass, and I was like, "Bro, I don't carry one po- 
quote around with me in my head like i have nobody that you know is there in my head that you know there's a line that dictates how i live or what i believe mm, in or any show also for that matter and i joked yeah. about you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take <laughs> and he was like please don't use that quote <laughs> i was just it's like it's not a it's a good quote <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay very interesting um cuz if we agree on everything now it sort of doesn't work for me yeah right <laughs> so now interestingly enough last week um, i've been working on a script for role models okay while i think it's important from a learned perspective hmm. which i can talk to you about today yeah but and because of the way you elaborated whatever you did i've had a completely different experience hmm so growing up man of steel hmm it was i mean you will laugh a lot of people will laugh and i say this in bmm i took i took journal because clark kent mm-hmm. is a journalist <laughs> <laughs> and i've a tattoo on the back but uh-huh. so and i think they have served me really well um although growing up when i looked at man of steel i was i was sure of oh he is the perfect ideal to follow hmm. because a couple of things about him right always do the right thing hmm. now granted as a kid what do you know about yeah. right and wrong yeah and then as i as where i am today now i can sort of write about it and i can think about it and i can explain i can elaborate it right hmm. so i definitely think so what I am it's really so weird for me. Okay, when you do actions because when when I am doing anything, right? I have these voices in my head. Hmm. I legit have these voices, not in a in a creepy way. Yeah. Manner. But you know for example, if I'm going through some struggle, it could be a mechanical one, it could be a psychological one, be it anything. Hmm. Suddenly now today in the last 2 3 years, Marcus Aurelius comes in my mind. You know, wow. he says things like that line soon you will forget all things soon all things will forget you it actually comes to my mind oh, wow. i'm like baat to sahi hai because Haan. it's true you know it's it's not going to matter like for example the, tra- the transition that i'm going through there 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 is always a chance that this might happen and this might not happen and i was talking to my mom all of this paperwork that we're doing you could make a mistake and it doesn't go through then what do you do it's hmm. not the end of the world hmm. but as a kid I would, I would definitely face twenty minutes of oh my god, and I'm trying to imagine myself as a child hmm. and not having that those strong voices. Now I have a lot of voices like there's Marcus Aurelius, there's Epictetus, there's Seneca, there's Socrates. There's a yeah. lot of people, right? Yeah. There, there's a lot of guidance. So my question to you is, when you are faced with any trepidations or struggles or obstacles or anything, what's the first thing that happens in your mind? If you don't have voices, I, I I can't imagine that. So I'm just trying to understand that. It's my own voice that's there in my head. Okay. Like, uh, so tell me one thing. If there's a like how I give you an example. Yeah. There might be some themes in your brain, right? You huh. you tell yourself something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you tell yourself? So there are a couple of things. Of course. Like how you said that when you were younger, you had a certain ideal that you were following, basis man of steel. Like you had loosely, ideal this loosely at that time. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So in my head it was always change is inevitable. Right. This this has always stayed with me. Right. And my life has also kind of gone that way if you go to see. Of course. It's constantly changed from one thing yeah. to the other to the other to the other. Lots of unexpected things have happened. And I think if I had been too rigid in trying to follow a certain lifestyle or trying to be a certain person, I may not have seen the opportunities that would have come my way. Okay. So, um, I forgot what I said. No. So when you have that struggle, yeah, you get these voices. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. said one of them is change. Change is inevitable. Change is inevitable. Right. Yeah. So, in so my head, it's thing. like a listen. Whatever is happening. And that serves you every time. Most of the times. Most of the times. It's also a rainy day. That is the second thing. <laughs> no, I mean I get that because broadly speaking, there are these. two forces right yeah which are if it has to happen it will happen correct but there's also one another voice 
if you want to make it happen you can you make can. it happen yeah. so it's always yeah. a struggle between correct yeah uh, but so here's the thing for me what happened was and because i don't know i've had the proclivity towards reading i don't know how, your experience or your history with re- reading because we haven't weirdly enough never spoken about that uh, but as i sort of followed subsequent books right it's like mm. one book tells you to read the other book like mm. you know that's just how it is so so for yeah. example i stumbled across socrates from stoicism hmm. right yeah. uh, marx or lysis talking about this guy seneca is talking about this guy yeah who is this guy so that's Correct. how it happened right yeah. so for me this these two forces which are interacting yeah and it's a very difficult path to tread along right Correct. what do you do yeah so then stoicism has a better way of functioning yeah it says the chief function of life is just this the chief function of a philosopher is just this to understand those things that are in your control and do something about it and those things that are not in your control and do like not, you can't yeah, do anything about that yeah exactly right yeah. so that's helped me understand so again i don't i don't know where to take this this conversation this particular topic because i don't my question see i'll be honest my question then becomes well there are two questions do you think that that is sufficient just the change is inevitable hmm cuz you are saying that it's sufficient till now hmm right but whatever there's a better way does that ever that does that question ever come to you okay that's one okay that's the only one <laughs> uh i'm not saying that that's wrong or right yeah because yeah. it served you till now yeah. but my question then to me is usually okay it served you till now but what if you're dumb mm. that's a question i ask myself yeah. you know yeah. you there's a hindsight bias we have right it's worked i can explain it and that's why i think i did that yeah okay so one all of us follow different and i will call this values over here right Definitely. let me call these values because these are our belief systems typically that's what our values are i would look at i mean principles would be a better word these are the principles ha, okay, principles yeah. right principles and um, these are evolutionary correct Definitely. with experience they change yeah so in the phase that i am in currently um where yoga is helping me deal with life i've realized nothing is more important than your peace of mind and Fine. whatever happens Fine. bahar in your externalities is fine but what's important is what is happening right here yeah and you can do whatever the fuck you have to do to keep this stable yeah correct you I can mean, tell yourself whatever yeah to keep this stable yeah. yeah that does not mean that you hide from the truth and you kind of right. suppress what is right yeah but um sorry i got distracted by no no i get it. what you're trying to say is that there are principles that we follow and they're evolutionary and yeah. the current state that you're in with respect to yoga and that's where you got lost and this whole thing where change is inevitable you don't know what is happening in the future kind of falls down that road i may have twisted it in my own head and manipulated the philosophy to suit my needs as well is what i'm saying yeah, yeah, correct because yeah. i have lived a certain way so i am seeing that philosophy i am seeing that learning a certain way and using it in my life hmm. to make it suit my needs Okay. Right. Now. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So what I I'm agree. actually trying to say is that the future is uncertain. <laughs> Change okay. Is okay. Let me play a devil. So it's fine. It Let works. Me a, sorry. <laughs> Let me play a, the devil's advocate with this particular question, and then we'll move on to the next question because yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with you, so I don't see the point of. Uh, I see it di- differently. Yeah. I see it differently, yeah. definitely, but I don't see. the only this devil's advocate part will be interesting Wait, what you was this after gita or before gita the what? changes in the devil's part that was always there, always there. but yeah. it got firmer when i read the gita yeah. right so it became like a thing that yeah man like everything is not in your control but what is in your control in a certain moment you do what you can at that moment so see when i say this the change is inevitable rehne de i do not mean you escape from what is happening i, I get it you are not talking about complacency it, but you deal with it quickly and you let it go don't hold on to it so i Fair don't enough. i try my best at least i can't say i don't because obviously it doesn't happen every single time there right. are issues sometimes right. which are not as easy to deal with and they get carried forward but i try at least to live by that so what has happened in the past let it be 
try and live in what is happening right now yeah. and that's where my whole idea of not thinking to ahead into the future also comes in that one the fact that when i was doing those 20 different things in life before i hit or found yoga there was always a feeling of dissatisfaction with what i'm doing right or a feeling of being incomplete in what i'm doing even with bakli ko i knew i'm doing something that i absolutely love and nobody and nothing can take away from that right. but i knew that i'm not doing enough there is something yeah yeah i'm not doing enough yeah. let me just put it that way understood but now at the stage that i'm in even with my yoga practice i don't want 100 students i'm good with 25 yeah. 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 but i am putting in my best foot forward every morning when i show up to class right. you know that has become my priority and with yoga with the current mix that i'm in whether it is my professional life or my personal life i have found and i'm not going to use the word comfort spot over here because it's not that because mentally there are challenges every single day in both these yeah. fields but i have found a place where i'm actually feeling complete fair enough so the idea of now still trying to strive yeah. and you know like set some goals for myself or whatever is um kind of not where i'm at right now having said that again it does not mean that the process of growth stops here right because that does not stop right that keeps going on and on and on and on and on, and on. no i get it i'm the only reason i smiled was because you were adding so many clauses to it yeah. which is the right the right way to do it i i would i would imagine and here's what i'm struggling with <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just just going to lay out whatever i'm struggling with one you said the change is inevitable but this has not changed what is the this the you the the, the, the phrase the phrase has not changed so it's <laughs> sort of counter to your point right yeah. and i'm not saying you are being contradictory hmm. right the other thing is okay let me ask you this goal because this i think encapsulates everything what are goals then because i know how to yeah. answer my the question yeah. for this like how would you answer it because i'm i'm a future i i'm okay <laughs> the two weeks back when you were sitting here you said a line and you said this oh we are quite similar yeah which is true yeah but we are not similar because we think similarly we are similar because we we end up the our results are similar hmm. our processes are not similar no. so yeah. you are very present oriented ish hmm. if i'm not wrong huh. i'm very future oriented ha huh. you don't have voices ha huh. ish ha huh. i have voices ha huh. so then it's a very and it's it's a little uh, sad that it's taken us 8 years to figure that out huh. um, but but again not sad that happens a, with age like that see man i think we all went through a phase not we all went through a phase but <laughs> when we are younger we don't a lot of times have that maturity to really um, delve so deep into our own personalities and we have so many distractions to keep us busy keep us busy that we don't find the opportunities also sometimes i agree with you and i agree that that happened around you you as well but that didn't happen around me so the what i'm what is sad is not what you're saying what hmm. is sad is so while you're you, let's say the the circumference around you of what this was happening was true to what you're saying Hmm. But I was having these conversations even then. Okay. I was still not obviously to the level that we are doing it right now, huh. but I was still stumbling. Ha. Huh. I was still talking about these things yeah. and for some reason the people around me at that time were not interested. Ha. Huh. Yeah. You know, because and maybe you. you were ahead of your time at that time and thinking that way. Or you didn't find I the right people. Me, that's definitely Because most people would have been like me at that age. Distracted. I mean, I find people distracted even today. Yeah, you yeah. Know. You are the, our paths have somewhere converged there. You are right. I'm. I'm just trying to figure out. So the the, the aspect of when you articulate something, and if, if it feels wrong, mm. I let that guide me. So our mm. paths have converged. It seems right. It seems incomplete. Hmm. Like there seems to there's a clause that is missing. <laughs> you know I can't figure it out right now. Okay, our you said what are goals? Paths have converged, but not entirely. <laughs> so I was just like, huh? <laughs> okay. You, I asked you what are goals, and you asked me. what are goals yeah what are your uh, goals okay what are goals
okay broadly speaking goals are that which you want to attain achieve or get to that's broadly speaking is that sufficient yeah okay. that's how i see it as well right okay. like i see goals as an aspiration that you have set for yourself and that, a right there how do you set the aspiration because you can't do it in the present moment yeah. is what i feel exactly. maybe i'm wrong i don't know which is why i don't have goals <laughs> you don't have goals that's really? what i just mentioned that yes i have a goal to grow and be happy and like things like that but then like what does that goal mean but what does that goal mean cuz then grow. those are two different goals okay so akri said this i usually say this particular phrase at the beginning of podcast huh. uh sorry beginning of the conversations but mm. right now i love it that it's coming here he said that the beginning of wisdom not wisdom the beginning of wisdom is the definition of terms beginning of wisdom is the definition of terms because they give you clarity in thought yeah. is it so mm. with said Hmm. He we are talking about creativity, and he said creativity is something that comes, you can bring, um, <laughs> you, you can attain. Like it was everything. Huh. But then if it's everything, then we don't know how to work towards it. Correct. So if you are saying you don't have goals, and then you are saying that you have goals. Huh. So okay. So I think let me clarify it then rather. Um. So in my head. when a lot of people talk about goals and this is often a question that is asked when you go to give an interview right so it's one of those things that you have prepped already in school and college then when you are trying to look for a job and things like that so there is definitely some conditioning in my head listening mm-hmm. to the word goals mm-hmm. right, right. Uh, and i don't mean football over here so no, but no i get it yeah ha huh, so um goals you are clarifying goals yeah What you were saying that say? there was a societal meaning attached correct, to correct, goals. Correct, correct, correct. So there is a ingrained stereotype as to what goals look like: five-year plan, ten-year plan, fifteen-year plan. And when I say aspirations, a lot of it, when I see it attached to the word goals, are material aspirations. Fair enough. Right, mm-hmm. like yeah, very corporatey, very yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, because I come from a background where my dad is in that setup. Well, so you sort of have a disdain towards the word, in a way, not not extremely, but do you you do want to get away from that? I meaning. want to get away from those material aspirations yeah, because I they have that. never mattered right. so much to me. Right. I see. Yeah. Okay. A car is a car. It could yeah. be a Sandro. Yeah. It could be a Merc. A Merc is just more high maintenance and sucks out more money out of your yeah. And if you don't have it, plus peace yeah. of mind. Yeah. A Sandro is so much better, and yeah. it serves the same purpose. Yeah. They're Or, both cars. They in take you from case, one place no to the cars. other. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. that case, an Uber or a rickshaw is even better. Yeah. So that's always been the case with me. So my right. aspirations have never been so materialistic. Yes, I always had a thing that I want to travel and I want to see everything and I want to do this and that. But they were all experience oriented. Fair enough. So till today, when I think of goals in my own head, I don't set them. Like there is no benchmark that I want to reach. Fair enough. It's a very broad goal. Define open that. ended define that what that, do you mean by open ended give me one so, example if you can yeah okay so again i'll come back to my yoga practice right like again not my physical yoga practice because that i know is growing every single day yeah through the effort that i'm putting in yeah. on my mat and yeah. extra extra etc so <laughs> uh, the goal attached to my yoga practice for example is more to do with my mind right so Fair when enough. i when i over here i mentioned that it's a broad goal it's growth oriented that i don't want to stop learning about myself or mm-hmm. i don't want to stop learning about my environment i want to keep growing in that aspect of self exploration right and my relationship with my environment and how do i fit in correct okay. so identifying my role in society so my relationship with my environment fits in over there and identifying my own self better right and being able to have better control over my thoughts over how i'm channelizing my energy and things like that okay. so it's that that broad broadly no no i understand okay um, so okay wow your idea of goals effort. then is to find an optimal mode of being which lets you operate in the short term as well as in the long term so that what yeah. you do today Serves you in three months, a year, ten years, fifty years, whatever. Till, yeah, yeah. 
uh, and also not in a way where you're being too hard on yourself right yeah. so something of a balance that comes in yeah play. yeah yeah okay yeah actually to put it simply my goal is to set a balance in life fair enough a healthy balance in whatever i'm doing okay okay i'll just share this one thing and then we'll move on because i think it's very important from my perspective um because the stoics had this idea and this is what i think about it i'll tell you what i think about it first hmm there is the environment hmm right and then there is us hmm when it comes to animals there's an environment there's them and they react to it they respond to it and the en- environment also responds to it and that's why we have uh, the survival of the fittest mm. where the animals have to adhere to the laws of nature mm. but once they do the nature itself changes mm. so it's always it's not there's the nature is in a static concept correct it's ever changing Evol- yeah it's evolving right? but with humans hmm there is the environment hmm there is us but then there is a filter of sorts now when i say filter i don't mean a thing which blocks but a filter which changes which is predicated on our value system hmm. so for example if there's a lion and he's not looking at me and if i take, take a stone and throw it at him or her then then it would be a lioness. lioness then that he's going to come towards me and attack me i hmm. would think hmm. right if i take a chocolate like mm. a box of chocolate and throw it at the lion mm. same reaction mm. right mm. um because there is no filter mm. you throw something at someone mm. at, at an animal it charges at you because that's the nature of that particular animal mm. right if i take a stone and throw it at parth junior he'll be upset he'll be mad he'll be angry and he'll be a little surprised and he'll be he'll ask me why did i do that if i throw a chocolate at him he might be like oh, Okay, thanks. Yay. Yeah. Either he'll have it or he'll not have it, but his reaction will be very different because of the context. Correct. Hmm. Right. So there is a filter there. Yeah. Now if I throw a chocolate at a stranger, hmm. that all is also completely different because now it's a stranger. Context is changing depending on all these different variables. Yeah. Now I think, obviously, the Stoics didn't articulate this in a literature form. This is hmm. how I see it. But the way they and it's very complicated, right? How do you figure out what that filter is? Hmm. How do you You can't sit down. You can't sit and figure out everything that can happen. Yeah, okay? every if, probability. If Parth does this, I'll do this. Correct. But if Sharad does this, I'll do this. Yeah. But if this one does this, you can't do it. Correct. That. So their idea was that you follow the four cardinal virtues and just these. If you do these, if you focus only on these, hmm. they will build your character. Hmm. And the char- character is the only thing that you have, hmm. which is your mind, right? Uh, and if you do this, you don't really need anything. So they had these four. um virtues and the only reason i'm ex- uh, not explaining i'm the sharing this is because i think it'll help you because you are you hit on one of them hmm. you hit on balance hmm. which is temperance hmm. which is moderation which says nothing too much nothing too less correct you might not need a murk hmm. and you might not need a santro hmm. or you might just need a murk hmm. or you might just need a santro hmm. but a balance hmm. figure out depending on where you are how much you're making how much is required Correct. how much is essential exactly. so that is one which you hit on means. which yeah. is balance the other three things they hit on is wisdom hmm. to know what is the right thing to do hmm. to know that this is in your control this is not hmm. so that's wisdom hmm. that also i hit on but i yeah. when i said you hit on balance that was the most recent in this particular conversation, conversation. the other two things are courage hmm. and justice hmm. because and you need and of also these are very intertwined huh. you know you, if you're just courageous for your sake then yeah. that just audacity and that just braveness maybe sometimes mm, mm. you know uh, and justice can't be when you're doing it in isolation that's mm. where your environment thing comes in so that's that um okay here's a here's a question how would your 20 year old self hmm describe you of course you wouldn't know describe precisely. me back then or describe the, me now the 20 year old self describing the 30 year old self <laughs> yeah Nice question. You know because <laughs> on Facebook we have this question. What would you tell your 20 year old self if you could go back in time? Oh wow. Hold on. What would he tell you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Wow. How would I describe myself? How would the 20 year old self 20, describe you? 20 yeah, the 20 year old me describe my 30 year old me. Wow, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I think I'd call myself a hippie. 
the if 20 year old the 20 year old me hippie. yeah would call the 30 year old me hippie why because the 20 year old me is conditioned and at that time things goals are yeah. tangible material mm-hmm. goals um, so w- what would hippie mean with her the 20 year old me would think that are ye kya painting karti hai aur yoga karti hai you know you know <laughs> <laughs> this is some uh, hippie chick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, <know>? yeah. <laughs> Without looking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, back then, I would think that's unrealistic mm. to lead a life like that. Right. In a way, this life back then would have been aspirational to me. Should it's, have been. Could have been. Well, okay, yeah. Could yeah. have been. Could have been, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because... But you didn't know it. I didn't know it. <laughs> nice. Now, let me reverse it. What do you think about your 20 self now? In a phrase or two. What do I, what do I think about myself now? As a 20-year-old. No, what do you think about the 20-year-old you? Huh. Oh, dumb and lost. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, way too distracted in life way too distracted i didn't give myself too much thought you didn't give yourself too much thought yeah what does that in the mean? sense that 20 year old me was in um jahin correct yeah yeah so in college yeah um dancing doing drama and like <laughs> chilling because I remember a, a we video. We used to do all I those fests. Yeah, yeah. yeah, life just revolved around doing fests and projects and chilling and friends and you know a little bit of family here and there. Yeah. So, I I don't think I even gave myself time to think at that time. Yeah. I loved reading though, um, mm-hmm. but I was never inclined towards uh, philosophy at that stage. In fact, I used to think this is bullshit. Yeah, this yeah. is hippie culture, and you know, this is yeah. all like it's not some practical, blah, blah, blah. It's pseudo yeah, intellectual. It's like, yeah, this is what people read from God's type thing, you know, like, this is what it is. And right. at that time, I don't think I even knew the difference between, between spirituality and religion. Right. Um, right. That time, I was not that well read on that, on the, that front. part of uh, yeah. literature. Yeah. I used to read Harry Potter and Aragorn and you know like Hobbit and things like that. It was all fantasy. Yeah. So I think I would say that I lived in that kind of world as well, where I didn't give too much thought to philosophy. But ha, now I'm, it's I'm, changed. Yeah. Little little bit. Now it, not little. I'll bit, say a little I'm bit like only because drastically of drastically changed. Right. No, I'll say a little bit only because like what do we know? That's yeah, the only reason I say it that correct. way. Yeah. What's the role of reading books? Oh, I think the they play a big, big, big role in life, right? I'm pretty sure in your case, a lot of your guiding voices come from literature, from what you have read. Yeah. Whether it is Man of Steel or whether it is today Marcus Aurelius or Socrates. For me also, literature has played a huge role because it's evolved. Like I said, when I was in my 20s, when I was younger, I was reading only fiction. Yeah. Then there was a phase where I read only philosophy, but not philosophy like you did because I was on a different path. So I was reading about Shiva and mm-hmm. I was reading mm-hmm. yogic philosophy. I was reading the Gita. I was reading more subtexts related to the Gita. So I was on that tangent. Now, when I understood what that philosophy is talking about, and I'm, I'm just going to use the word understood here because I don't, I'm not there yet. Right. right? I'm right. not fully following it yet because it's a struggle to follow that. Precisely. So I'm still on the yeah. path yeah. Yeah. of trying to get there. Yeah. That is where I started breaking it down that wait. So at least in yoga, there is a whole thing that, uh, so yoga follows eight steps. The last step being samadhi. And the first step being your morals, mm. your value mm. systems, like we use the word. So, but it says it, it's a progression that you have to go from one to the second, second to third, Without third skipping. to fourth, etc., etc. Yeah, because step by step, you start getting control of your behavior, your body, your breath, your mind, and then you finally reach your stage of samadhi. So, I started seeing it from that perspective that, okay, I know what this is, what now let me start working down to up. Hmm. 
right so your moral values are fine like your non violence saying being truthful all of those things are fine but then i started looking at how the body works what are the disturbances within the body what are the disturbances within the breath so let's start aligning those so now the literature that i'm reading is all self help books related to my physical well being right for example right. gut is a great book right. then i read atomic habits right. on uh, building good habits right. then currently i'm reading this book called breath um so now i'm reading books that are going to help me align my body to support my meditation practice right so you're reading books which are which you can practically utilize absolutely right absolutely now. yeah 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 okay to the point of reading books you've sort of now there's a way you're functioning with the books huh. you're not just reading books you're functioning with the books correct so how did you transition from reading fantasy fiction slash fiction to what you're reading currently where did that transition happen was it a smooth sailing one was it one day you there was a break it? there was a okay. big break where i was um, not reading not books. reading and uh, i had moved towards consuming visual content mindless visual content so not literature related just random just random so just things. to friends like, office okay. vampire diaries random things that had no consequence to my right. life so right. so i had and i think this was the phase where i was lost in mm. life right so i mm. was not reading i was watching mindless content basically suppression distraction right. was it hitting you that you're not reading was in the back of yes. yeah, okay yes and i did make attempts to read as well but even one page just i was just like right. read two lines then drift away <laughs> right. and be like what am i reading and then just be like that Let was it me. what am i reading was there any indication of why am i reading this if you if you can remember no no okay when i pick a book i pick it with interest like i i go okay. through the right. back and i see if right. it's right. appealing to me etc etc yeah. et but yeah that was in fact the first time i started leaving books midway right. or after 5 pages 10 pages prior to that i had never done that irrespective of it how boring insulting. the book would right. be right. i would, you would still go it. through it So then, at what point did you come back to to books? When I started doing uh, my yoga teacher's training course. So not even through Bartlico. Be- that was the phase where I had stopped reading properly. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'll. So this is the place where I let you ask me a question without uh, any relation to the previous conversation. What prompted you to not take music seriously anymore? Oh. So like where did that's music a, fall out of that equation for you? That's a very depressing answer and I don't use it I'm not using it loosely. Uh, so uh, there is a good to fair chance because I have mild anhedonia. What's that? Anhedonia is a by product of depression. Okay. And what happens is you stop getting pleasure from things that were pleasurable uh, earlier to you. Hmm. So that is what my that's well I've spoken to my therapist that's definitely the thing. that's one part hmm. of that so that is one the other non depressing answer i think is that i have and this is something interesting with re- respect to not just music sports performances anything i hate to be a very strong word i'm not a big fan of being in the audience hmm so when i'm listening to music in my head like why can't i write my own why can't hmm. i perform like Four years back, when I would, when Parth would share uh, concerts and stuff like that with me, I would like it. But I genuinely don't like going to concerts because I don't want to watch someone else do what I think I could do hmm. back then. Hmm. Right now, I think it's the the Anandonia part. But uh, but also this, I don't like being in the audience. I don't know. I mean, I think I can do more. Hmm. Uh, I don't end up doing because there's only so much you can do. Uh, I think music is something I am going to depart from. Like hmm. just yesterday, while I was sleeping and not sleeping at the same time, hmm. um, I was thinking, okay, I have to sell my violin, keyboard, my guitar, and not because I have to, because I don't have any reason to keep them anymore. Hmm. And it's, it's and it it ties into the question of you have to sacrifice some things for to make space for new things. For, no, well, to make space for the things that you love more. Hmm. Unfortunately, you know, it's I have to choose. Hmm. Is it music and vlogs, or is it podcasts and reading and writing about the things that I'm doing? Hmm. So I'm choosing this because I love this more. Hmm. You know, it's not that oh I'm 
I have to give a part of me which I love for something. But there is a possibility that you may come back definitely. to music what do I a few know? years down yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you're not shut to that idea. I'm not shut to that idea, but today I have to make space. Uh, I see it more like the first my early twenties was exploration as to what is my capability, what is my aptitude with respect, my affinity with respect to my aptitude. Yeah. Have I recognized that? Yeah. And now I'm making conscious choice. This. and not this because now i'll do that and then within this field again i'll explore and again narrow down that's how i see it Makes so sense. that's the answer to that okay a uh, quote hmm, hmm? the quote, quote na ha yeah. all right so this quote actually comes from hatha yoga um there's a book called hatha yoga pradipika which so to give you a brief idea you have something known as patanjali's ashtang yoga then you have sub books that were written years later that told you how to follow those eight paths basically so hatha yoga is one of the um, eras that came after patanjali's yoga sutras that helps you with your physical asan practice your breath work etc and since i mentioned that i am in that space right now where i'm trying to align my body and my breath to support my mind this quote is where this fits in so there is a um, shlok in that which says chale vate chalam chittam nischalam nischale bhavet this is in sanskrit it means jaise aapki saanse chalengi waisa aapka man chalega so the way your breath moves is how your mind will move if you can control your breath you will be able to control your mind and vice versa hmm. so both hmm. of them are interconnected right so um this particular shlok gives you the way to control your mind so when you're anxious you move to your breath right slow your breath right. down you'll be able to slow your mind down right and then probably heart rate comes down right. and everything yeah. starts coming down so yeah that's what i have been trying to uh, follow in a way and use as much as i can practically interesting because i have a well i use it as a hack more than from a a biological medicinal property kind of thing yeah for me it's like okay if i'm in a situation where i need to brace myself uh, recollect myself whatever it is in yeah. that time, yeah i take five deep breaths huh and that's one so because that sort of stabilizes me for those reasons which i didn't know but i Correct. came from this side yeah and the second thing i'm trying to do is that now i want to start pacing myself in terms of if i am responding to the stimuli around me i want to take one deep breath hmm and then respond hmm you know so there is a difference there Fair as enough. how we yeah, are seeing yeah. breath right yeah so what i am trying to do is i want to try and breathe slow and in a relaxed and calm manner 24/7 So I don't want yeah. to take those five deep breaths when I am in a state of anxiety. Yeah. I want to avoid yeah. that state of anxiety yeah. from happening in the first place. Fair enough. So Fair I want to try. So in fact, in this book that I'm reading right now, Breath, right? It's a beautiful book that talks about your breathing from a neuroscience scientific perspective, going back to philosophy and what yoga and all these practices are talking about. And it says that if you can take only six breaths in a minute. it will be ideal for your emotional and physical well-being as well as your mental health right but on an average you and i are possibly taking close to 15 to 20 breaths in a minute so on a 24/7 level we need to slow our breathing down and get it to that 6 to 6 right. ka ratio right which right. is what i'm trying to do fair enough i think heart rate is also very closely, closely linked that, absolutely yeah. i i know i i i'm pretty sure because i've been accidentally healthy for the last 12 years hmm. you know because of whatever i had a, already had a proclivity towards not indulging in junk food yeah i remember i used to look at my uh uh, uh fitbit, fitbit yeah. and my resting heartbeat was 54 wow so i was like okay i'm on the right track and then it would go to 59 some because it fluctuate right like 59 i'm doing something wrong hmm. come back to it <laughs> so no but i understand what you're talking about um the goal is another thing that i'm doing now these are different things which are taking me towards the same thing which is to slow down so yeah. i do the five thing if there's an extreme situation hmm. that doesn't happen as to as to tackling the anxiety part that's where the other tenets of stoicism come into play hmm 
and interesting i'm not really refuting anything i'm just adding to it uh now i go for walks in my building right after yeah. dinner like after 15 minutes yeah. and the whole goal while i'm walking and i catch myself you're walking too fast slow down hmm. you're walking too fast slow down hmm. and that's become and that's helped me a lot in the last 6 months where while i'm walking well or rather every act incident every every action that i take i try to slow myself down hmm. so even with writing from typing i come to writing hmm. i mean i used to always balance it out but now mo- even more so yeah you know uh, yes you can type it out but if given the option write, write it down because it it's going to force you first force you if you're not used to it and then it becomes second second nature to you i think we've covered everything uh, yeah i'm glad we got to do this uh, because this is going to be the last episode for this year i think hmm uh, and because i'm so bad at articulating my no, thoughts under pressure no <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, but also because there has there is a certain there's there's certain ele- there, there is a certain etiquette that has to be followed I think just because it's we're being respectful of that medium. Hmm. So and now what I'm going to say is going to sound so trivial. Thank you so much for doing this. Dude, sorry, but like when you were saying this there was something else also going on in my head and like suddenly it jumped to that like there was a realization that just happened basically. <laughs> so it um goes back to goals right <laughs> go for it yeah we got the title <laughs> no tell me yeah goalless <laughs> so <laughs> it goes back um, to goals yeah like a thought just came to me right like so one of the reasons i think why i don't set measurable goals in a way or like very solid goals is from that quote in the gita which i cannot say exactly because it's in sanskrit and i don't know it too well whatever but i'm going to just explain it simply that it says that it stems from expectations problems mm. most of our problems stem from expectations right. so the quote basically says that the root cause of most problems in your life is expectations expectations lead to desires desires lead to attachment yeah. attachments will ultimately if not met lead to disappointment yeah. disappointment will lead to loss of yeah. peace of mind yeah. and i think i see goals like that hmm. that you set an idea in your head yeah then you try and do things to achieve that goal but along the way if you fail then you feel disappointed about not reaching that goal right and then you hit a lull right but if you don't set that goal but if you keep doing what you're doing with patience with full dedication irrespective of where your path leads you i think that's a more sustainable way of living as i see it no, for no, me definitely what suits me definitely because because the chances of then falling off your path or you know like feeling that you have strayed away from your goals etc is kind of gone no no for, for sure but i think this this is definitely for the for people who are in that space of so okay again we are continuing a little bit but you, okay so there's a big difference I, I i'll use this example there's a big difference between stoics and skeptics hmm. stoicism sort of came from skeptic to a point the skeptics believe that virtue is the only good okay. very similar to stoics okay virtue is the which is very similar to your philosophy also virtue is the only good but the skeptics had an idea that everything else is bad distracting distracting goals okay. food uh, having a house so that's why diogenes hmm. would stay in a tub because you don't need wow. anything else like okay. when alexander the great came to diogenes and he said if i was not alexander the great i would want to be diogenes yeah. and diogenes said if i was not diogenes i would also want to be diogenes yeah and he yeah. said that because if you look at alexander the great he had hmm. everything he could get everything that he wanted but everything could be taken away from him so he always yeah. has that huh. diogenes doesn't have that so he's huh. free from all that okay, so, now so, the reason i huh. mentioned this but the stoics had a different idea he, they said that virtue is enough hmm. but there are two things one you have a duty to your brotherhood or your community hmm. so you have to be in the public space that's why stoicism is ideal for soldiers politicians people who want to be in the republic who want to engage with people hmm. and the second they said that there are there, there's a preferred indifference and there's a dispreferred or undifferred whatever is the right word indifference so 
you don't maybe you don't need a, a fancy house you maybe you don't need a fancy job but you don't have to give away the house that you have just to be you know minimal absolutely if you yeah, have yeah, yeah. you don't be sadistic to or masochistic towards yourself yeah 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 you know but in dono ke beech mein bhi there is a phase right like where you live by your means which is no which is how i see stoics correct you live by yeah, your means correct. do what is in your control correct so that's the where that's I, actually very very close to yoga philosophy yeah, yeah because oh exactly it, it's it's telling you that you are not in a way it calls sanya, sanyasis cowards yeah, yeah which is right yeah, because yeah. you have actually left you're given up your like sort of yeah 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 and you are running away from your duties yeah. and then trying to find samadhi yeah, yeah. right but what geeta says is that you're actually a true yogi if you're able to stay balanced yeah, yeah. unattached not expecting fruits of your labor while living in society yeah. so you're fulfilling yeah. your responsibilities yeah. towards your community towards yeah. your family towards your own well-being you're doing everything what an, whatever nature has assigned you yeah you're yeah. doing everything that a human is supposed to do living in the 21st century man yeah. is supposed yeah. to do yeah. yeah yeah but you're still keeping everything yeah. stable here yeah you're no, not getting I, attached I, to anything i'm the reason i made that face is because there's so much to add to this number to <laughs> add to that uh <laughs> <laughs> uh now to add to that um there's a line for the stoics which they say that um you don't have to you don't have to be a god but you don't have to be less than a human being yeah you know that's one and the second is from so you know there's an argument some idiots I'll say that uh make towards philosophy that it's not practical it's very pseudo and it's only for people in uh, towers yeah but for stoicism what what beautiful about that is While Marcus Aurelius is the emperor of Rome, Epictetus was a slave. Hmm. Like he, his Epictetus means, uh, uh, means to be owned. Like that's okay. his literal meaning. So he okay. was a slave. So uh, philosophy uh, has nothing is less conscious about social status than philosophy of any kind. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't matter whether you are a slave or a king. Yeah. In fact, Marcus Aurelius has this beautiful line, and I think that would be a great place to end. He says, "Even in a palace, it's possible to live well." Don't tell me that tem- you had temptations, and that's like such a beautiful line. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people think that it's easier to follow philosophy in a past life. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. So nice, well put. So we definitely know what the next episode when we do, <laughs> we'll. Uh, <laughs> no. Maza aaya na thevo. But thanks. Um, <laughs> but it's good. I I I I. I, I, I just finished reading. So. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you I know. Can, we can do a three-person <laughs> podcast next. Um, no, but I, I, I'm thankful or grateful, whichever makes sense, because this was a good discourse. Because we came with our different domains, and while there were differences, which is some, which is very poetic about how you and I are. <laughs> <laughs> Scorpios. I, I'll end it in the next. Sorry? Scorpios. Dark, oh my god. Mysterious and sexy. That's what, what we are. What happens when yogis and stoics <laughs> meet together? Scorpios. <laughs> mysterious and sexy. All right, so that was episode three with Ritika, and um, relatively speaking, I've not had as much time to reflect upon this conversation, but um, it's quite evident that there are a lot of branches that are possible um, in this conversation. I'd like to know what you guys think. Do you have a sense of duty, or do you have some alternative, or does that not make sense at all? I would like to know that. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below, and I will see what we can do about that. Thank you so much for your time, and as always. <laughs>